Later this morning, a Fulton County grand jury will go back to work with the possibility they'll be handed the case against former President Donald Trump and allies. It is more likely that allegations of election interference will go before one of two grand juries next week. This morning, we're getting some insight into how these proceedings happen when we talk about a grand jury room and really just how it all works. 11 Alive's Jerry Carr is joining us outside the Fulton County Courthouse where it's all going to go down, Jerry. This process is similar to a lot of cases, but there are some unique differences is a lot of people don't know about. Uh, good morning, Aisha. That is correct. No matter where they take place, uh, no matter the defendant, grand juries always take place behind closed doors in secret, unlike criminal trials that are in open court. But there are former prosecutors who have been a part of other grand jury proceedings separate from the Donald Trump case who are giving us some insight into what happens behind those closed doors. We won't see them at work. We may never see their faces, but the people meeting in a grand jury room inside the Fulton County Courthouse are making history. It's about the way grand juries operate under normal circumstances, and they're trying to normalize this, though it's not normal. District Attorney Fonnie Willis spent more than two years investigating Donald Trump and his efforts to overturn Georgia's 2020 vote. Now she'll try to convince a grand jury that there's enough evidence of criminal wrongdoing to charge the former president. She'll come armed with a report from a special grand jury that heard months of testimony. Former Fulton County Prosecutor Melissa Redmond says Willis doesn't have to present her entire case, just enough to prove that it should continue. You don't have to bring in every witness that testified before the special grand jury. You can have the DA's investigators or others who can summarize all of that testimony. We do know that they have subpoenaed several witnesses. They may want to allow the grand jurors an opportunity to question those witnesses. 16 grand jurors have to be present to make a decision. At least 12 have to vote yes for a criminal indictment, triggering formal charges. Grand juries do not determine guilt or innocence. Former prosecutor Daryl Cohen says typically the defendant, even a former president, does not present their side to a grand jury. This is a one-way street. It is unusual, though possible, for the defense to bring in someone, but that's strictly at the discretion of the district attorney's office, and it happens almost never. An investigation lasting over two years will soon be in the hands of a history-making grand jury in Fulton County. All right, Jerry, so we've heard a lot of allegations and indications here. Fonnie Will is saying that she does plan to seek several charges against several people. Let's talk about that. What happens with the grand jury? Can they vote to indict on some of the charges, but not others? Grand juries are free to vote yes or no on any defendant, yes or no on any charge, and it takes a majority of them to get an indictment, unlike a criminal trial where you have to have a unanimous verdict, all of the jurors agreeing for a conviction on any criminal charge. Back to you.